One night, Peter, bound with two chains, was sleeping between two of the soldiers. More soldiers were guarding the door of the jail. Herod was planning to bring Peter out before the people the next day. Suddenly, an angel of the Lord was standing there, and the room was filled with light. The angel tapped Peter on the side and woke him up. The angel said, Hurry, get up. The chains fell off Peter's hands. The angel said, Get dressed and put on your sandals. Peter did as he was told. Then the angel said, Put on your coat and follow me. So the angel went out and Peter followed. He did not know if the angel was really doing this. He thought he might be seeing a vision. Peter and the angel went past the first guard and the second guard. Then they came to the iron gate that separated them from the city. The gate opened for them by itself. After they went through the gate and walked about a block, the angel suddenly left. Peter realized then what had happened. He thought, Now I know that the Lord really sent his angel to me. He rescued me from Herod and from everything those Jews thought would happen to me. When Peter realized this, he went to the home of Mary, the mother of John, who was also called Mark. Many people were gathered there and were praying. Peter knocked on the outside door. A servant girl named Rhoda came to answer it. She recognized Peter's voice and she was very happy. She even forgot to open the door. She ran inside and told the group, Peter is at the door. The believer said to her, you are crazy. But she continued to say that it was true. So they said, it must be Peter's angel. But Peter continued to knock. When the believers opened the door, they saw him. They were amazed. Peter made a sign with his hand to tell them to be quiet. He explained to them how the Lord led him out of the jail. He said, tell James and the other brothers what happened. Then he left and went to another place. The next day, the soldiers were very upset. They wondered what happened to Peter. Herod looked everywhere for him, but could not find him. So he questioned the guards and then ordered that they be killed. Later, Herod moved from Judea. He went to the city of Caesarea and stayed there a while. Herod was very angry with the people from the cities of Tyre and Sidon. But these cities needed food from his country. So a group of them came to ask him for peace. They were able to get Blastus, the king's personal servant, on their side. Herod decided on a day to meet with them. On that day, he was wearing a beautiful royal robe. He sat on his throne and made a speech to the people. The people shouted, This is the voice of a god, not a man. Herod did not give the glory to God, so an angel of the Lord caused him to get sick. He was eaten by worms inside him, and he died. The message of God was spreading, reaching more and more people. After Barnabas and Saul finished their work in Jerusalem, they returned to Antioch, taking John Mark with them. In the church at Antioch, there were some prophets and teachers. They were Barnabas, Simeon called Niger, Lucius from the city of Cyrene, Manain, who had grown up with King Herod, and Saul. These men were all serving the Lord and fasting when the Holy Spirit said to them, Appoint Barnabas and Saul to do a special work for me. They are the ones I have chosen to do it. So the church fasted and prayed. They laid their hands on Barnabas and Saul and sent them out. Barnabas and Saul were sent out by the Holy Spirit. They went to the city of Seleucia. Then they sailed from there to the island of Cyprus. When Barnabas and Saul came to the city of Salamis, they told the message of God in the Jewish synagogues. John Mark was with them to help. They went across the whole island to the city of Paphos. There, they met a Jewish man named Bar-Jesus who did magic. He was a false prophet. He always stayed close to Sergius Paulus, who was the governor and a very smart man. He invited Barnabas and Saul to come visit him because he wanted to hear the message of God. But the magician Elamus, as Bar-Jesus was called in Greek, spoke against them, trying to stop the governor from believing in Jesus. But Saul, also known as Paul, filled with the Holy Spirit, looked hard at Elamus and said, You son of the devil, full of lies and all kinds of evil tricks, 
You are an enemy of everything that is right. Will you never stop trying to change the Lord's truth into lies? Now the Lord will touch you and you will be blind. For a time, you will not be able to see anything, not even the light from the sun. Then everything became dark for Elamus. He walked around lost. He was trying to find someone to lead him by the hand. When the governor saw this, he believed. He was amazed at the teaching about the Lord. Paul and the people with him sailed away from Paphos. They came to Persia, a city in Pamphylia. There, John Mark left them and returned to Jerusalem. They continued their trip from Perga and went to Antioch, a city near Pisidia. On the Sabbath day, they went to the Jewish synagogue and sat down. The law of Moses and the writings of the prophets were read. Then the leaders of the synagogue sent a message to Paul and Barnabas. Brothers, if you have something to say that will help the people here, please speak. Paul stood up, raised his hand to get their attention and said, People of Israel and all you others who worship the true God, please listen to me. The God of Israel chose our ancestors. And during the time our people lived in Egypt as foreigners, he made them great. Then he brought them out of the country with great power. And he was patient with them for 40 years in the desert. God destroyed seven nations in the land of Canaan and gave their land to his people. All this happened in about 450 years. After this, God gave our people judges until the time of Samuel the prophet. Then the people asked for a king. God gave them Saul, the son of Kish. Saul was from the tribe of Benjamin. He was king for 40 years. After God took Saul away, God made David their king. This is what God said about David. David, the son of Jesse, is the kind of person who does what pleases me. He will do everything I want him to do. As he promised, God has brought one of David's descendants to Israel to be their savior. That descendant is Jesus. Before he came, John told all the people of Israel what they should do. He told them to be baptized to show they wanted to change their lives. When John was finishing his work, he said, Who do you think I am? I am not the Messiah. He is coming later, and I am not worthy to be the slave who unties his sandals. My brothers, sons in the family of Abraham, and you other people who also worship the true God, listen, the news about this salvation has been sent to us. The Jews living in Jerusalem and their leaders did not realize that Jesus was the Savior. The words the prophets wrote about him were read every Sabbath day. But they did not understand. They condemned Jesus. When they did this, they made the words of the prophets come true. They could not find any real reason why Jesus should die. But they asked Pilate to kill him. These Jews did all the bad things that the scripture said would happen to Jesus. Then they took Jesus down from the cross and put him in a tomb. But God raised him from death. After this, for many days, those who had gone with Jesus from Galilee to Jerusalem saw him. They are now his witnesses to our people. We tell you the good news about the promise God made to our ancestors. We are their descendants, and God has made this promise come true for us. God did this by raising Jesus from death. We also read about this in Psalm 2. You are my son. Today I have become your father. God raised Jesus from death. Jesus will never go back to the grave and become dust. So God said, I will give you the true and holy promises that I made to David. But in another psalm it says, You will not let your Holy One rot in the grave. David did God's will during the time he lived. Then he died and was buried like all his ancestors, and his body did rot in the grave. But the one God raised from death did not rot in the grave. Brothers, Understand what we are telling you. You can have forgiveness of your sins through this Jesus. The law of Moses could not free you from your sins. But you can be made right with God if you believe in Jesus. So be careful. Don't let what the prophet said happen to you. Listen, you people who doubt, you can wonder, but then go away and die. Because during your time, I will do something that you will not believe. You will not believe it. 
even if someone explains it to you. As Paul and Barnabas were leaving the synagogue, the people asked them to come again on the next Sabbath day and tell them more about these things. After the meeting, many of the people followed Paul and Barnabas, including many Jews and people who had changed their religion to be like Jews and worship the true God. Paul and Barnabas encouraged them to continue trusting in God's grace. On the next Sabbath day, almost all the people in the city came together to hear the word of the Lord. When the Jews there saw all these people, they became very jealous, shouting insults. They argued against everything Paul said. But Paul and Barnabas spoke very boldly. They said, We had to tell God's message to you Jews first, but you refused to listen. You have made it clear that you are not worthy of having eternal life. So we will now go to those who are not Jews. This is what the Lord told us to do. I have made you a light for the other nations, to show people all over the world the way to be saved. When the non-Jewish people heard Paul say this, they were happy. They gave honor to the message of the Lord, and many of them believed it. These were the ones chosen to have eternal life. And so the message of the Lord was being told throughout the whole country. But the Jews there caused some of the important religious women and the leaders of the city to be angry and turn against Paul and Barnabas and throw them out of town. So Paul and Barnabas shook the dust off their feet. Then they went to the city of Iconium. But the Lord's followers in Antioch were happy and filled with the Holy Spirit. Paul and Barnabas went to the city of Iconium. As they did in Antioch, they entered the Jewish synagogue. They spoke to the people there. They spoke so well that many Jews and Greeks believed what they said. But some of the Jews did not believe. They said things that caused the non-Jewish people to be angry and turn against the believers. So Paul and Barnabas stayed in Iconium a long time, and they spoke bravely for the Lord. They told the people about God's grace. The Lord proved that what they said was true by causing miraculous signs and wonders to be done through them. But some of the people in the city agreed with the Jews who did not believe Paul and Barnabas. Others followed the apostles, so the city was divided. Some of the Jews there, as well as their leaders and some of the non-Jewish people, were determined to hurt Paul and Barnabas. They wanted to stone them to death. When Paul and Barnabas learned about this, they left the city. They went to Lystra and Derbe, cities in Lyconia, and to the surrounding areas. They told the good news there too. In Lystra, there was a man who had something wrong with his feet. He had been born crippled and had never walked. He was sitting and listening to Paul speak. Paul looked straight at him and saw that the man believed God could heal him. So Paul shouted, Stand up on your feet! The man jumped up and began walking around. When the people saw what Paul did, they shouted in their own Lyconian language. They said, the gods have come down to us in the form of humans. The people began to call Barnabas Zeus, and they called Paul Hermes because he was the main speaker. The temple of Zeus was near the city. The priest of this temple brought some bulls and flowers to the city gates. The priest and the people wanted to offer sacrifices to Paul and Barnabas. But when the apostles, Barnabas and Paul, understood what the people were doing. They tore their own clothes. Then they ran in among the people and shouted to them, Men, why are you doing this? We are not gods. We are human just like you. We came to tell you the good news. We are telling you to turn away from these worthless things. Turn to the true living God, the one who made the sky, the earth, the sea, and everything that is in them. In the past, God let all the nations do what they wanted. But God was always there doing the good things that prove He is real. He gives you rain from heaven and good harvest at the right times. He gives you plenty of food and fills your hearts with joy. Even after saying all this, Paul and Barnabas still could hardly stop the people from offering sacrifices to them. 
Then some Jews came from Antioch and Iconium and persuaded the people to turn against Paul. So they threw stones at him and dragged him out of the town. They thought they had killed him. But when the followers of Jesus gathered around him, he got up and went back into the town. The next day, he and Barnabas left and went to the city of Derbe.